Well, welcome back. Welcome back to the Extraordinary Drummer Show. As you know, I'm your host, Sharon Moore. You know, I always say today, today, today. Well, today is just that. I got a guy on the show today, I tell you. He can finesse a drum kit, boy. Yeah, we're going to talk about that. He plays like sort of inside out or left hand. Oh, I mean, you got to see it to believe. <laughs> he's absolutely awesome. Among other things, he's a songwriter. He's a producer. He's a recording artist. I just call him a drummer's drummer. Please help me welcome PJ Spragans. Hey, welcome <laughs> to the show, man. Hey, thanks so much for having me, Sharon. I appreciate it. Many things I want to talk to you about, but let's start here. What's your approach to the drum kit? Uh, my approach to drumming is simple. Um, I I like to play in a manner that allows me to hear everything that's going on in the band. Um, I want to be able to hear what the bassist is doing, the guitarist is doing, keyboardist, saxophone player, especially vocalists if we have one. But that's how I play. I want to be able to hear everybody when we all play together. So that means I need to make sure my volume is in, in check. You notice when you play, you have the hi-hat on the left side, but you're playing open hand. Can you explain that? Uh, I The only way I know to explain it is um, I'm pretty much self-taught. So when I first learned how to play, I sat down to the kit and it made logical sense to me that my strongest hand should hit the snare drum because it's the backbeat. So I'm right-handed. My right hand hits the snare drum. Therefore, <coughs> excuse me, my left hand is closest to the hi-hat. So that's what hits the hi-hat. So that's how I play. That's why I play open-handed. Uh, on my latest EP, Up From Here, there's a song called Grace and Mercy. Talk about your credits. What's it like working with Kim Scott? Uh, Kim is uh, one of my favorite people to work with. Uh, she's an outstanding flutist, uh, one of the best in the business. Uh, her tone is is so unique. Uh, it's very dead on um, tone wise. It's, she's so like on key is not funny. Um, like I said, she has a very unique sound. Uh, she's a very very professional artist as well. Um, I've had the uh, privilege to produce about three or four tracks for uh, on various on her various albums. Uh, I think it's three alone on her album "Rite of Passage," um, "Block Party," "Treetops," and, and uh, "Sweet Obsession." Uh, those are uh, some of my favorite tunes that I've done with her. She's a great person, great friend as well. PJ, where are you originally from? Uh, I was born in Clovis, New Mexico. My dad was in the Air Force, so uh, born in New Mexico. Uh, grew up in Bessemer, Alabama, and now we're living in Birmingham, Alabama. PJ, where did you get your first drum kit? Do you remember? Yes, that's a very uh, fond memory. Um, Christmas of 85, uh, I believe, well, 85, I was 10 years old. Um, that's when I got my first drum set. It was a surprise from my, my parents. Um, it's a it's a Tama Swing Star, a five-piece Tama Swing Star drum set, black. And I still have that kit. Um, my parents surprised me and, uh, me and my brothers with, various things that we wanted that particular Christmas. And I have been 
talking about a drum set for years and I finally got it and man I tell you that was the best Christmas ever. PJ, do you do you think that that's fair that you didn't have to play on those Sears and Robot drum kits and those catalog <laughs> kits with the little symbol out of the bass drum? <laughs> you started. Well, with you know what? I did have one of those. Uh, I guess I was man, maybe six or seven. My dad got me uh, one of those. I don't know if it was a first act or maybe it was a Sears and Robot drum set, but. It was a toy drum set. It had the paper heads, just like you had the cymbals sticking up out the bass drum. And uh, I tore it up Christmas Day. The first day, I tore it up. I was like, I need a real drum set. So uh, shortly after that, he ended up getting me a set of Timbales. And, you know, Timbales are cool. You know, Sheila E. made those famous. But to me, that wasn't a real drum set. It was only two drums side by side. I wanted a real drum set that you could sit down to play. So that's, you know, that's what I got Christmas 85. And that, for me, changed the game. PJ, let's go to college. What's the college scene like? Uh, college for me was great. Um, from uh, McAdory High School, which was majority white high school and a certain type of marching style, going to Alabama State University and HBCU, and, you know, we, I had to learn how to play my instrument, the quads, and dance at the same time. That was a challenge. That was a huge culture shock for me. But it was really a whole lot of fun uh, learning how to do all that. Uh, the intense band rehearsals, trying to get right for uh, the, the Magic City Classic, which is like the, the biggest uh, HBCU rival in the nation between Alabama State University and Alabama A&M, which is in Huntsville. Um, but, of course, I played for Alabama State University and um, had a lot of fun. I only marched one year because that was, a to me, that was a lot of work for just one credit hour. And I wanted to focus on music and, you know, gigging. And to me, uh, marching band was getting in the way. It was fun while it lasted. DJ, let's talk about the accolades. You were nominated for a Jazz Music Award? Yes, sir. That was uh, that uh, ceremony was in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, a song from my latest EP, Up From Here, uh, and that's the title track, Up From Here. It was nominated for Song of the Year for the Jazz Music Awards. Uh, I didn't win the category, however. I didn't win the award. Uh, Norman Brown, a uh, very well-known jazz guitarist, he's, he won the award. award. But um, to be nominated along with Norman Brown, who's been in the game for, like, decades, you know, I'm, I'm pretty much a nobody. And to be nominated alongside him, man, I was, I was in heaven. It was a it was a great evening and uh, one I won't soon forget. We do a thing on the show we call word of advice. Well, I ask the guests, I ask the drummers if they believe a parting word of advice for the young guys, the up and comer guys, even the guys at the next level, but that are trying to get traction in this game in this industry. PJ, would you leave them a word of advice? Uh, my word of advice would be intangibles. Uh, I think it's important for every musician to it um, to have the intangibles it takes to be successful, successful in what you do. Um, intangibles are things like being on time, um, dressing the part for the gig. Uh, you don't want to wear a football jersey to a wedding reception. That, that's not going to fly. It's not It's not going to be a good look, and you probably will never get a call back from whoever calls you in the first place. So you want to dress the part for the gig, and you want to learn the music ahead of time, especially, you know, nowadays, you know, people email you their music way ahead of time. So it's incumbent upon us as musicians to use that time 
that practice time when we are at home by ourselves, learning the music, familiarizing ourselves with the music, the ins and outs, you know, uh, the the stops, the rest, and all that stuff. So when you get to sound check, you'll you'll know it, and you guys won't spend hours trying to learn something that you should already learn on your own. Um, that's important, and also having a uh, an attitude that you're easy to work with. That's that's very important too. It'll take you a long way in this thing called music. Thank you. Let's talk about gear, endorsements. What are you playing? What drums? What cymbals? Sticks and so forth. Drum heads. Uh, let's see. Sticks. I'm using uh, Vic Firth Five A Extreme Wood Tip. Um, I love Vic Firth drumsticks. They've always been uh, solid ever since I've been playing drum. Um, love Vic Firth. As far as cymbals, I recently switched from to Minel. Uh, so I play the Minel Byzance line. And I absolutely love those cymbals. I even take my own cymbals on the road now. Or, you know, whenever I have to fly to a gig, I check my cymbal bag. So I'm always at home when I'm sitting behind a kit now with my own cymbals. Um, drums, I have a DW drum set that I play. It's my personal kit. Um, DW Performance Series. Uh, and the sizes are, for the toms, is 10, 12, 14, 16. And a 20-inch bass drum. I don't like the, the big bass drums because they're kind of cumbersome to carry around. So I stick with a 20-inch bass drum, a lot easier to handle. Um, and I, I'm endorsed by uh, Motion Pro Drum Throne, a uh, very, uh, very helpful drum throne, if you will. It allows you to, uh, it allows your spine to float while you're playing, uh, therefore making you feel less fatigued when you've been, you've been sitting for a long time playing. So uh, shout out to Motion Pro Drum Thrones. You doing any electronics back there? Yes, uh, I do have a uh, an Alesis drum pad, the Alesis Multi Strike drum pad. It's a sampling pad too, and uh, I incorporate that in my with my acoustic kit quite a bit. I also have in my stick bag a Roland Wave One pad, and uh, that has like it's just one drum pad. It's very um, very portable. Like I said, it's in my stick bag, and it, I take it to all my gigs when I can't take my, my big drum pad. Uh, but the Wave 1 rolling pad allows me to trigger samples. It has like 12 different banks, and you can input whole backing tracks in there if you wanted to. Uh, but I use mine for hand claps, um, finger snaps, chimes, you know, the little uh, the toys that you would want to have on a kit. Mm -hmm. um, and I just use that whenever I can't carry my big pad with me. PJ, on a different note, speaking of your awesome, huge body of work, let's talk about the album Time to Heal. What's the inspiration to that? Uh, Time to Heal is very uh, near and dear to me because it was music that was composed uh, while my then wife and I were recovering from transplant surgery, kidney transplant surgery. Uh, I was fortunate enough to uh, be a perfect match to donate a kidney to her because she needed it at the time. And uh, while we were recovering, uh, Time to Heal, all that music came from that time, you know, it chronicalized that whole time. Um, so I took my laptop and, you know, a MIDI keyboard, um, packed it up with me and spent, I guess, about four weeks up in Nashville uh, after the transplant while we were recovering. We wanted to be close to the hospital so it wouldn't take us a long time getting back and forth. So um, I just, you know, broke my my keyboard out when I woke up and started working on music and the end result is a whole body of work called Time to Heal that is pretty much music dedicated to that whole time of my life. 
This question I usually ask the guests towards the end of the show, and I hope you wouldn't mind if I would ask you. PJ, what do you want your legacy to be, to be said, to be told? Well, I think my legacy, um, part of my legacy is my music, the music that I've uh, been blessed to be able to put out over the years. Um, to me, music is very, very powerful, and I want to use that power for good. And um, to me, the biggest compliment is when I get an, um, an email from a fan or, you know, a comment on one of my one of the videos on my YouTube channel saying how much my music has helped them, how much it has blessed them, and how, you know, they listen continuously to uh, to feel joy and feel uplifted. To me, that is, that's very huge because, um, like I said, music is powerful and I think it should be used for good to help people like that. So I think that is part of my legacy and I'm, I'm happy about that. Let me say thank you so very much for being on the Extraordinary Drummer Show. I really appreciate having you on. Hey, thank you for having me, man. It's been a blast. I hope you would come back again and again. Yes, sir. If you would have me, I'm here. <laughs> hey, would you help us wave goodbye to all the fans? All right, fans. Thank you all for watching the Extraordinary Drummer Show with Sharon Moore and myself, James P.J. Spragans. Uh, if you want to find my music, check me out on the internet, uh, www.jamespjspraggins.com. And all social media, the same thing. Uh, you can find my music on iTunes, Pandora, Spotify, uh, Amazon. Anywhere you get your music is there. Wow. Thank you. Thank you again, PJ. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. I'll talk to you soon. Yes, sir. Bye now.